Hey guys, today's video is quite an exciting one. I thought I would do a draw my life because I've never actually done one of these on my channel before and they have always been highly requested. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's begin. Here's me as a little red cherub at the hospital. My name is Sally Jo Hickey. As you guys may or may not know, that's my last name and Jo is my middle name. I was my mum's only child and my dad's fourth child, so it's his second marriage. And I was born on November 11th, 1993 in Auckland, which makes me 22. If anyone's wondering, I always get asked how old I am. And as of right now, I'm 22. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22 me right now. <laughs> so this is a beautiful drawing of a TV. When I was young, maybe two or three, I used to watch my dad on the news and I just thought it was super normal. I thought everyone's dads were on TV, so it was really not a big deal to me. The only thing was I didn't get to see my dad that often because he would work really long days and when he would get home I'd already be in bed. But on the weekend I got to see him. This is us having our spaghetti and sausages on toast every Saturday morning. We would sit at my little pink plastic table and he would squeeze in with me. I don't know how he even fit on it and that is a good memory. I'll always treasure. Oh and I wrote Johnny Bravo because we would always watch that together too. <laughs> So at this stage in my life, I lived in Auckland with obviously my mum. Moppy is her nickname because she's got a mop of hair, that's what my dad calls her. Obviously my dad was there too, and many of you will know him if you're from New Zealand because like I said, he was on the weather for about 26 years I think, so most people do know him and will say hey Jim in the streets. My dad also has three other children from a previous marriage, so I've got two half sisters and a half brother, and my brother Jamie lived at home with us while I was growing up. So I really close to him. I used to think he was the coolest brother ever. He'd always hang out with me and I just thought he was the best. <laughs> he had a funny sense of humor, hence the t-shirt. He has so many shirts like that. It's kind of embarrassing in this day and age, but he's awesome. And that's me in 100 layers because my mum used to always worry about me being too cold and I was dressed up like a little Eskimo all the time. So we lived in Auckland till I was about nine and then we moved to New Plymouth to be closer to my grandparents. So Dad quit his job and we moved to New Plymouth and I was super, super shy. I'd had my one best friend all my life called Amanda and we were really close and I just didn't really know how to make friends with all these new kids. All I got on the first few weeks was, oh my gosh, your dad is Jim Hickey. But after a while, people kind of got over it. I got less shy and I managed to settle in to that school. I took up piano in Auckland and I continued playing it in New Plymouth. I had an awesome teacher, her name was Jeanette. So if you ever watch this, which I highly doubt, hello Jeanette. <laughs> I also did jazz ballet, which I really liked, but I was really naughty both with playing instruments and dancing. I barely ever practiced unless it was something I really liked doing and I seemed to mostly get away with it. And my teachers would say, oh, good work. You must have practiced hard. And usually I would just wing it, which was really bad. Um, another good thing about New Plymouth was that my family visited often because my grandma and granddad lived right next to us and I always got to see my cousin Antonia, who's really close to me in age. So I was always so excited to see her and we would play lots together. Then as I got older, I went to intermediate and one of the main things I remember is I would try to do worse in school and I didn't want any attention drawn to myself because if I got an award or if I did something well everyone would just say oh it's only because of your dad that you got that award and uh, boys would ask me out and then I would say no and they'd be like oh I only wanted to meet your dad so I got quite low self-esteem at that point in my life and I just wished that my dad had a normal job I didn't really I understand a whole lot still about his job, only that he was away a lot and that people would make fun of me. So I was like, oh, I wish my dad had a normal job. But then he went back to work at TVNZ and I saw how happy it made my family. There was a lot less stress on us all because he was back working. So then I was like, okay, it's a good job. <laughs> So then when I went to high school, I had a lot of really cool friends that I made throughout the time being there. I was at Spotswood College in New Plymouth, if anyone was wondering. I was worried that people would be mean to me like an intermediate, but I actually made some awesome, awesome friends. I had a massive group of friends in high school and everyone would hang out together. It was so much fun and a lot of those people I'm still friends with today. So it was just a really good time and I enjoyed all the subjects I took for the most part. I was happy to put my 100% self into trying 
and I wasn't worried about people teasing me or anything. So those are all the subjects I liked, but I would always hate science, maths, and PE. Science was okay, but I wasn't very good at maths or PE, so those were my two subjects, and I was like, ah, get me out of here. One of the highlights of school for me was when I got to go on a Japan trip because I took Japanese for four years, and I still to this day want to go back. That's some pretty kura I did. I had the best host family. It was just such a fun time. As you guys probably know by now, I love Japanese culture and kawaii stuff. One of my most heartbreaking moments was when we drove past Disneyland and we didn't have time to go in because it was a school trip. I couldn't just go in by myself. So that's one of my life goals. One day I want to go to a Disneyland, but that definitely crushed me inside that we had to just drive straight past. I also found a YouTuber in high school and I would go on and on about it. All my friends from high school will know. I also couldn't get anything she mentioned in New Zealand. But it kind of opened the idea up of YouTube to me and I was like, this is so awesome because no one wanted to listen to me yarn about makeup all day. So I thought the YouTube community was really cool. It's part time at a supermarket also. This is me redoing my hairstyle because we had to have our hair up for work. And as you guys know, I hate how my ears stick out. So I used to do these weird like pigtails, which my supervisor would let me. And I'm glad that I had to work at a supermarket. I also wasn't allowed a car till I was 21. My parents were very strict, but... Looking back on Glax, it taught me the value of money, so I loved working there. It allowed me to buy makeup and OPI nail polishes and all the things I loved. So things were going well, but my grandparents actually passed away when I was in high school, and it was really sad. I didn't see my family as much anymore because no one came to visit them, and I just still miss them to this day. It was obviously a really hard time for my family. Fast forward a few years, my parents moved into a new house. I finished up high school and I moved to Auckland, which was very exciting, but also scary. I got accepted into the AUT Bachelor of Communications degree. There was only 300 spots, so I decided that was the degree I was going to do. Mum, of course, was really sad that I was leaving home, but Dad was in Auckland a lot already for work, so that was kind of cool. He was just like, I'll see you soon, and we had a lot of coffee catch-ups and stuff while I was at uni, which was always cool. Moved up to uni by myself, moved out of home, I lived in a hostel kind of thing for AUT and I found it difficult to settle into uni to start with because not only did I have a lot of different ideas to people, like I didn't really care about designers and all that kind of stuff, I would just wear my hospice clothes and everyone already knew each other because they were all from Auckland already so they'd all been to the same schools and stuff. No one was mean to me but I just didn't really find many friends for quite a while. So while I was still at uni, I managed to land a job at a life pharmacy and I loved working there. I would assist on the fragrances counter and also the Lancome counter and I just loved playing with all the makeup. I also was lucky enough to get a job at the body shop while I was at uni so I would put makeup on people and just play with all the beautiful smelly products and I just loved it and it really assured me that I wanted to work somewhere in the beauty industry because I just really enjoyed that field of work. So back to uni, I had no free time on my hands, so much to do. I couldn't even go out for dinner and stuff with my flatmates because I was so busy. Then midway through the year, I got super sick. So I've got a history of tonsillitis. I'd get it at least a few times a year. Sorry about that spelling. I feel like that's not the right spelling, but you guys know what I mean. And I could feel a bout of it coming on, but I had so much to do with uni. And I'd also started YouTube and people were starting to request regular uploads. So eventually I rang my mom and I was like, Mom, I need you to take me to the doctors. And basically the doctor was an asshole, for lack of a better word. And he would not give me antibiotics because he was on this rant about how they're given away too freely. And my mom was like, look at her medical history. She needs antibiotics, you know. And he was like, no. So basically, long story short, I ended up in A&E twice and they couldn't find out what was wrong with me. I couldn't swallow my own saliva. I couldn't eat and drink, obviously. And I just felt like I was dying. I was like this big puff and I was in so much pain. And the worst part was when my dad came to visit me the second time in hospital, I think he left work early and he was very visibly upset and my parents were just beside themselves. They didn't know what to do and that's when I really realized how serious it was. And it was just really scary, but in the end it turned out to be a throat abscess and I started spitting up pus, so they actually had to slice it open while I was awake. And then a few months later I got my tonsils out and now I'm a lot better. So it was just really lucky that my doctor at A&E was onto it and noticed the throat abscess and that it was about to pop. And so thank goodness that's all over now. 
So back to YouTube, obviously in university, everybody is a struggling student and instead of buying groceries, I would go into new market and spend all my money in Mecca Cosmetics and MAC and I just loved it because being from New Plymouth for most of my life, we didn't have MAC or any of these big makeup stores and I would just go nuts and buy lots of products and then I'd use them on my YouTube. And it just astounded me that people kept watching and watching and I made some awesome friends. And granted, I'm not the best makeup artist or anything out there, but my favorite type of comment to get was from people saying, hey, you helped me out so much. I just found it so rewarding. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. But there I was at the same time trying to finish my bachelor's degree. I was doing an internship and my dad actually discouraged me from doing YouTube. And he was like, no, focus on your studies, which is funny now because obviously he's supportive. But most parents don't really understand the whole concept of YouTube. This is where the bay comes in. Yes, I say the bay because most people find it really annoying. <laughs> so Tamara and I were friends in high school, 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 and he was actually part of that group of friends I was talking about earlier. And we just stayed in touch throughout university and we were always calling each other, chatting, joking. I just got on with him so well. And after a few years of becoming best friends, he asked me out at Rhythm and Vines, which is a music festival next to Kim.com's fireworks and we were kind of like, oh, should we give it a go? Because we liked each other so much, but you know, when you're like really good friends with someone, there's always that chance that it might not work out. But we were like, what the heck? Well, let's just give it a go. And as most of you would know, we're still together now. So that was one of the best decisions we've made, definitely. So I feel like that's a pretty brief overview of my life, but that brings us to today where I got a 100k subscribers button from YouTube and I was mind blown. It's still super surreal that that many of you watch me. I cannot believe it. I got my bachelor's degree, so that was done and dusted. We have a gorgeous little fluffy butt, maybe, <laughs> as you guys will know if you follow me on social media. And I'm living back in New Plymouth now with Tama so we can be near our families and it just works out well for our jobs right now. So that is where we are at. And of course, I'm over the moon. Thank you guys so much for everything you do for me. And it just incorporates everything I love, which is helping people, beauty, entertainment. It's just fantastic. And you guys are amazing. I can never, ever thank you enough. So thank you so much for watching my Draw My Life. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a fact about you down below because I want to get to know you guys as well. Um, have an amazing day and I'll talk to you again really soon. Bye. And this is quite pricey, so yeah, kind of on the fence about if I'll repurchase that. Next thing I have here are some Clinique Take the Day Off Micellar Cleansing Towelettes for eyes and face. I really enjoyed these cleansing cloths. I'm back to 